Well, it's a brand new year, which means it is time for a brand new collection tour. And boy, do I have a lot to show you. We have close to 400 different pieces that I'm going to be showing you in the next few moments. But the best part is we have a brand new collection room, a brand new type of display that I can't wait to reveal. And all that and more is coming up next. Well, what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel for what you've all been waiting for. Finally, the collection room tour that I've been working so diligently towards and it's time to unveil and pull back the curtain so that you can see all the goodness that we've been working towards. But before we get into that, I do want to say that if this is your first time with us or you're just a long time lurker, please make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. There's a lot of big things coming up this upcoming year in 2024, and I wanna make sure that you are a part of it and along for the ride. So presumptive like on this video, as well as making sure you're subscribed, I would certainly appreciate it. So the collection room, the update, we are ready to get into this, but I have some big shoes to fill because the last time that we did this, over a year ago, pretty much right at a year, we ended up doing 70,000 views on that last video. So I need to do at least that, right? So make sure that you are commenting throughout the video so that we can boost that engagement because I want everyone to see everything that we've been working towards. I would certainly appreciate it. But before we unveil all of this, I thought it'd be good to do a little bit of a time travel, to go back in time and see just how far that we've come. My first collection tour that I actually put on YouTube was about four years ago. And since then, we've had several iterations and evolutions. And it's been kind of humbling to see just how far we've come from going to bookcases, to adding detoffs, getting rid of my six inch figures, switching fully over to six scale in statues, and then trying to curate and figure out what was going to be the next best thing to enhance my display. As you can see, we added some backdrops and that was the latest iteration, but we couldn't stop there. More was coming. It almost brings a tear to my eye to think about how much time and effort that we've put into this channel over the past four years to get to this point. But that's enough about everything that we've done in the past. It is now time to get to the future. Well, you've seen the teases, you've seen the hints, you've seen some of the behind the scenes, but now it's time to show it all to you in all of its glory. Here it is, the latest installment of my collection room the official collection tour featuring no more detoffs, as you can see, but rather fully custom builds. Now, as you can see, there are vehicles that are a part of this display. And essentially everything in my collection was all over the place in multiple different spots in the house. And I realized I needed to get it all into one room, but the only way to really do that was to do a custom build. And as you've seen before, these are simply garage shelves. And I wanted to be able to put them all together in teams. That way I could get some of the bigger figures together. And I think overall, it's probably going to lend itself to a nice aesthetic. And when you look at it and see it all, take a step back and say, wow, okay, that does look pretty good. Now, there are plenty of naysayers out there that do not like big cramped collections, but you know what? This is my collection and I am more than fine with it. So I'm going to take you on a little tour. We're going to take a look at each section, essentially from Marvel to pop culture, Ghostbusters, Game of Thrones, Star Wars, and everything in between. So strap in, there will be timestamps to let you know where all the different pieces are, but let's get going. Starting here is Star Wars, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take off each panel individually and dive into each individual shelf. And as I said, they are just acrylic panels that are magnetized. And you can see when you put them on here, you can put one side there, one side there, and it does a pretty decent job of dust proofing. That was the whole reason I wanted to do this is to be able to keep the figures as nice as possible and dust free as possible. So that's what we have here. But I will be taking off each piece so that there isn't any glare. But let's start up here with Star Wars. And I know some people are wondering, whoa, why is there starting off with a sequel trilogy piece? I know, but that Kylo Ren Adam Driver is fantastic, as you can see. 
This is kind of an imperial shelf or a red and black shelf. I just like the aesthetic. It's got a lot of different things going on. The Emperor, Luke, Death Star, Gunner, Royal Guards. As you can see, here is Tarkin. Some argue that is one of the best sculpts ever. There is the Tarkin 2-pack Vader, and I think it looks pretty good. People worried about things being a little bit too cramped, and you know what? Everyone has their opinion, but I think it looks okay. You can still see all the figures, some more than others, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but I really do like this aesthetic. So for the first shelf, there is our Star Wars shelf. Moving down, here is the Bad Batch, and this set of figures is quickly becoming some of my favorite in the entire collection. Now, Wrecker is on the way. He will go right behind Crosshair and put him on a nice little pedestal. That will look awesome, but take a look at the Rogue One shelf. This is why, once again, I wanted to do this custom build so that I can put all these teams, if you want to call it that, together. You have all the different iterations of Shore Troopers. You have Chirrut. You have both different versions of Jin, K2SO, the Death Troopers. There's the Specialist that everyone loves the little doll. I do love that piece as well. Once again, shout out to Toy Department for helping me track that down a little bit ago. And uh, there is the Mandalorian Death Trooper and a Thrawn bust. And there's a few other little busts in here that we'll take a look at. But that is the first shelf I will be putting on the acrylic panel and then taking off another one to get right back to the next piece. And so here is the Grand Inquisitor. Here is Darth Maul, one of the best DXs ever. The Purge Trooper, which I've been on record as saying the worst figure of 2023. We have some Qui-Gon, some Maul, kind of a Mandalorian shelf, if you want to call it that, with Costco, with Ahsoka, the vintage TV series Boba Fett, the Book of Boba Fett, Cad Bane, as well as the Bird Poop Boba Fett, as people call him. Now down here are, I guess if you want to call it, the less desirable figures, and I agree there shouldn't be that many of these in your collection, and I actually have gone through and gotten rid of quite a few, but this is bottom shelf, and here is some of the sequel trilogy figures. I do like the Luke. Crate Luke's pretty good. The Ray is pretty good. The figures are great. I just don't really like the representation, and that DX07 is just an older figure. The better figure I feel is at the top. So once again, here are all the Star Wars shelves in this first rack. And overall, I do like the aesthetic. You can kind of see everything and there is plenty of room for growth. And that was my main thing, growth. That is what I'm looking for. And so up here, we're still sticking with Star Wars, but as you will see, there is a little bit of Batman mixed in here just because you got to fit some of the different pieces in. We will talk about those and we'll go to the clones at the top, but let's talk about some of these bottom shelfers, if you will. And that is kind of indoor Luke, indoor Leia, Wicket. The scout troopers are from the Mandalorian, which then ties that string to here. That is the original Mando release, the dark saber, as well as a Mando bust. And here is Book of Boba Fett on the throne with Fennec Shand. And as people have said, and I do agree, this is one of the best female head sculpts that they have ever done of Ming-Na Wen. I think she looks exceptional. There is Mando on the swoop bike with one of my 50,000 Grogu's. And here is Nomad Boba Fett, as well as a Tusken Raider. As I've said before, I'm trying to have a thread connect some of these figures all together, and that way it makes sense. Moving on up here is a little bit more Mando. Here you have Moff Gideon, Quill, the Armorer, Dark Trooper, everything from the Mando line. And yes, the Blurg and Heavy Infantry Mandalorian all fit, and I am very happy about that. Once again, I built these so that bigger pieces could actually fit and be displayed. But there's the Mando shelf, and there is the Pedro Pascal head sculpt that a lot of people like. It's a little too mopey for me, but overall, not a bad figure. But now let's look at some clones. And this is a shelf that I will admit is a little bit too full, but I would love to share this with you. You have Darth Maul, you have the 501st, you have Captain Rex, Anakin, Jango, Ahsoka, all these different things all work together. We have some of the Sideshow original ARC Troopers. There is Echo, as well as Fives, which you'll see in just a minute. Count Dooku. There is Jesse, one of my favorite head sculpts that they put out with one of the ARC Troopers. I really do love the tattoo on the face. You can see Fox, another one of the ARC Troopers, but there is Anakin Skywalker, the dark side, the favorite figure in my collection. There's Cody. There is Yoda sitting on top of Anakin's base, as well as Obi-Wan Kenobi himself. Now, as I said, I do know that this shelf is a little bit full, and 
we're still a work in progress. We're trying to figure out ways to divvy everything up, work on some different types of risers, but we do have an opportunity for growth and to move things around. But these are some of my favorite figures in the collection. The exclusive Stormtrooper Han and Stormtrooper Luke with Chewbacca back there. I think he looks exceptional. Very happy to have that. They look all incredible, especially next to Leia. And this whole idea of just kind of like a new hope shelf I think comes together pretty nice. Now those are the Attack of the Clones, 3PO and R2, but you can't get past that Sir Alec Guinness head sculpt. It is absolutely one of a kind. There is the Han from the Han and Chewie two pack, and he is partnered with the Bespin Leia. And once again, the thread attaching everything, the Empire Strikes Back figures. There is Snowspeeder Luke, there's Boba Fett, there's my Sideshow Rancor, which just fits back there, as well as Hoth Leia and Lando. Now, I'm not happy with all the way the Star Wars shelf is, but I'm still working on that because I have these Dark Knight figures sandwiched into the middle. Now, here is the in-art Joker, and it took some doing to get the hair as I wanted it, but overall, once I got it fixed, I think it looks exceptional. There's the Armory, there is Alfred, there is the DX-19, and I still think that is one of the best Batmans. So many people don't like that one at all. This is the Daft Toys Scarecrow. There is the exclusive Commissioner Gordon in the SWAT gear. And the big piece that you can see in the back there is the Tumbler, which is a massive vehicle that I wanted to make sure could be displayed and seen within this collection room, not in a separate room like it used to be. But here is Two-Face. There is the DX-12 on top of the Batpod with Harley Quinn sitting right next to him. I know it's a little bit different universe, but this is my universe that we're living in here. And I love that Suicide Squad Harley Quinn. Here is the in-art jail cell version of the Joker with that alternate smirk. I think he does look exceptional. There is the bat signal from the Commissioner Gordon and John Blake two-pack. Speaking of John Blake, there he is, and there is the Blue Bail Man. A lot of people hate this figure, but I absolutely love it. Now, we do have some things coming that I'm trying to make room for, because here is the Bat Cycle from the Batman. Whenever the new Batman figure does ship, it will be sitting right here. But that's an exceptional piece. Shout out Toy Department for that. But here is one of my favorite figures, the XE suit from Arkham, as well as the Batman Beyond suit from the Arkham games. And once again, I'm saying I'm building these so that I can put figures like that Batman Beyond with the wings up there for everyone to see. Moving down to the 89 Tim Burton Batman figures, here is Jack Nicholson's Joker. Here is Michael Keaton as Batman from Batman 89. The Mime Joker, which is the DX-14. And here is one of my latest pickups. This is the Batman from Batman Returns with the Michael Keaton head sculpt, which I think looks exceptional. Very happy to have that. Now, here is the actual Michael Keaton that came from the two-pack, Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne, and I really do love that figure as well, especially next to this custom Joaquin Phoenix Joker. Still waiting on InArt to put theirs up, but in the meantime, here is the Batman Forever figs with Chris O'Donnell as Robin, an incredible likeness, as well as Val Kilmer as Batman in the sonar suit. And these figures look absolutely incredible. Now, this is the whole reason that I did the build. I wanted the Ecto-1 and all my Ghostbusters, all my vehicles to all be in one collection room. And I built everything around this one piece. That's why it's kind of center because it's my favorite piece in the collection. My Blitzway Ghostbusters as well as the Blitzway Ecto-1. I wanted you to be able to see this thing in all of its glory. It's my biggest piece that I have. It's the heaviest piece I have. And yes, it's the most expensive piece that I paid overall. But there is no denying the fact that if you can get the Blitzway Ghostbusters, they truly are something special. And I know the present toys is coming out with some knockoffs, but I don't think you're gonna be able to beat any of these sculpts, any of these actual likenesses. I think that they are all absolutely A plus, 10 out of 10s. These are some of, if not my favorite pieces in the collection. But moving on down here, let's check out some 3-0 and Sensation Game of Thrones. Starting with Jon Snow sitting on the throne from 3-0. And shout out to Will for giving me a good source of tracking down the Beast Kingdom Iron Throne. 
it looks awesome and I got it for a great deal on Amazon. But let's take a look at some of the rest of these figures. Here is Danny. Here is Tyrion from 3-0. As I said, I'm still waiting on Inart Daenerys because she needs some help. Not the greatest likeness, but not too bad either, I guess. There's Ser Jorah. There's the Zensation Grey Worm. The 3-0 Jaime. There's the Zensation Tywin. There is Arya. There is the Zensation Bronn as well as the 3-0 Cersei. And as you can see, the Zensation figures, here's Zensation Davos, I really think their likenesses are far superior to any of the 3-0 pieces. There's the Hound there, there is Tormund, there is the Night King, as well as the White Walker, and I really love this line. I really love these figures. I know the season didn't end as anyone really wanted it to, and yeesh, that Danny is really rough, as well as that... Ned Stark. We really need an update to that. But there is Bran the Broken. But I really do like these figures. Overall, I think they look exceptional, and I'm very glad that they are all together on a shelf. But speaking of all together on a shelf, check out this one. This might be overall one of my favorite shelves just because of everything that's in it. Here are the three Zero Ninja Turtles from the Michael Bay films. There is Donatello. There is Rocksteady. There is Bebop. Raphael, Michelangelo, as well as Leonardo, but check out these three Zero Breaking Bad pieces and the hazmat suits. They are incredible. That is the Chicken Man, knockoff Gus Fring, still waiting on the Mars Toys one, but here is some Men in Black. This is not the Interbay. This is, I think it's called Black Toys, as well as the Pug. I love the chairs they came with, but speaking of dogs, check it out. There's Einstein as part of the Back to the Future shelf with the DeLorean, the Doc Brown, and you might be saying, wait a minute, is that Michael Jackson back there? Well, yes, it is. Do you remember in Back to the Future 2, Michael Jackson takes their order in the cafe, so it made sense in the world that I'm building. But here is the Doc Brown with the head sculpt that no one liked because they said, hey, you already used that one, but I am happy to have them nonetheless. Moving down here is kind of a mix match shelf of all these different IPs you have. Johnny Depp as Grindelwald, you have Robocop, Gizmo, which is extremely underrated. If you don't know what Gremlins is, do yourself a favor and check that out. But here is the DX-15 Jack Sparrow, one of the best hot toys ever made, sitting next to Davy Jones. And yes, that's King Shark back there with a little bit of Pennywise love up front, but I do love all those. And speaking of Michael Jackson, here are the Hot Toys Michael Jackson figures. There is the Billy Jean, his story tour. There is the DX03, Bad Michael Jackson, as well as a few other little pieces such as Squid Game, such as Johnny Depp as Danto from The Lone Ranger. And there's the first Hot Toys ever. That is George Lucas. So a little bit of history there. So I really do like this kind of amalgamation of lots of different properties, but now it's time to really make people mad. As we get ready to go to Marvel, I know so many people are seeing this and are seething. They're saying, it's too crowded. I don't like it. Well, thankfully, it is my display, and we are going to go with it as is, because at the end of the day, I do have a lot of Marvel figures, and I wanted to make sure to put them all together in teams, like I said. But we are going to start with Iron Man, because that is their bread and butter. So let's get going here. Here is the Battle Damage Mark 85. Some people say that this is the definitive Iron Man. Maybe it is to you. Let me know down below. There is the Suit Up Mark V, and there is the D100 Iron Man. As I said, that's one of the centerpieces because it is an exceptional figure. There is the Iron Man Mark VI, the War Machine Mark I from Iron Man 2. I love both of those figures. Absolute dynamic pieces of die cast. They're exceptional. There is the Mark II. There is the Mark VII from Avengers, the Mark IV with the donut. And here is one of my latest pickups from the toy department as well, that being the Iron Man Mark III. And I'm going on record and saying this is the best Iron Man hot toys they've ever produced to date. I mean, look how good that base is. Exceptional with the Iron Monger popping through. Now, around here are a few other little Iron Men smattered about, but we'll talk about those in a minute. But check out this. Now, I've done a 180 on this figure. 
that being the Days of Future Past Logan slash Wolverine, and he is with all the Deadpool friends because it just kind of works with that running joke. And there's Dusty Deadpool, one of my favorites, as well as Cable. And I think this works very, very well, especially because you're breaking the fourth wall, so he's sitting on a Spider-Man base. And I think it makes sense to me, and I really do love that shelf. So Deadpool, Venom Pool, and Wolverine. Now moving over here, there is the Mark 46. Up until just the other day was my favorite Iron Man, but that Mark III has definitely given it a run for its money. This is kind of an Infinity War shelf, as you can see. We'll talk through that, but let's talk about this little piece over here. This is the Ragnarok corner with Gladiator Hulk, Gladiator Thor, and I do think this is probably the best Chris Hemsworth head sculpt that we've gotten on Gladiator Thor. There is Ragnarok Loki, as well as Hela, one of the best female sculpts ever and she looks exceptional. And there is everyone's favorite, Road Warden Thor, but he's not my favorite, but he is an awesome piece to have. Here is Doctor Strange from Infinity War, but wearing the alternate Multiverse of Madness head sculpt, as you can see with that incursion eye. Here's Ebony Maw from Infinity War. I love that third-party figure. I think it's exceptional. One of my favorite third-party pieces I have, but there is Thanos with the gauntlet. There is Thor, there's Bucky, the Winter Soldier, as well as Groot, Rocket, got an Outrider, a little bit of Ant-Man down there. But as you can see, I'm happy to have Civil War Falcon with the wings extended. Now here is Venom, here is Carnage. These gigantic figures are having places to be, which I love. There's Venomized Iron Man, as well as, someone may not like this one, but Neon Tech Mark 50, as well as Tony Stark and the nanotech suit, which I think looks really cool next to each other. Moving down here is a little bit more of an in-game type shelf, as you will see in a moment, but there is another Iron Man from Iron Man 3, but it works as a space filler. There is Kate Bishop next to Hawkeye, and you'll see kind of the original six Avengers and their in-game looks. We will show you those in just a moment, but here is Professor Hulk, there is Black Widow, there's Corvus Glaive. Not a bad third-party figure, but decent. There is Sam Wilson, Captain America. Look how good those wings look. Once again, that's why I built these displays so I could properly display them. And there's Bucky from Captain and the Winter Soldier. And there is Thanos. There is Endgame Cap. There is Thor, the Iron Man Mark 85, as well as the 2012 updated version of Steve Rogers, Captain America. Really like that figure. And there's a Proxima Midnight hidden back there as well. Just now saw her. But here is Ronan from, if you want to call it Endgame, as well as the Hawkeye TV show. But here is Loki, the God of Mischief, as well as Ultron. So representing all the bad guys down there, as well as Age of Ultron Cap. There you can see War Machine, Rhodey, as well as a scroll head. That's a custom piece on the team suit up. Now there is the Hulkbuster. Now down here, I'm not gonna pop off the acrylic just because these are just big pieces. You've seen them all before. There's a couple quarter scale pieces down there, a bunch of transformers. There's my giant Venom statue. There is Darth Vader, Michael Jackson. You can see them. And I know you guys wanna see the hot toys. So let's get back to that. But here is some of my favorite little corners. Here is the Guardians of the Galaxy, starting with Chris Pratt as Star-Lord, there is Gamora, there is Drax, go ahead and save your jokes about being able to see him, there is Nebula, as well as Groot and Rocket, I do love the screaming Groot face, and of course Yondu, one of the best head sculpts ever, if not the best, I think he looks absolutely exceptional, and so when you can put them all together, look awesome, and there is the Ravager one scale Groot, I think he looks awesome. And there is Hulk. And talking about the threads, Hulk, they're Black Widow. They go together. That's a thread which attaches to this, the Black Widow line. And there is the white snowsuit Black Widow. There's Yelena. There's Stan Lee. Forgot to mention him when I was talking with the Guardians. There's Rocket. Forgot to mention him as well. That's the end game Rocket, but you get the point. But here is the Wanda shelf or the multiverse shelf. And there is the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff. There is the multiverse of madness version of Doctor Strange, exceptional figure. And here is the Civil War 
Scarlet Witch, as well as the Age of Ultron Scarlet Witch. And yeah, when you put them next to each other, you can see that the sculpts need some work. Here is the Infinity Ultron, another incredible piece. Very happy to have that underrated figure. Here is Vision from WandaVision, as well as White Vision from WandaVision. And of all my Wandas, of course, this is one of my favorites. That is the exclusive end of Age of Ultron suit. And there is her brother, Quicksilver. So I do love that shelf there. And moving down here, we have the Punisher. And I think that looks awesome next to Daredevil, the Netflix Punisher series. There is Moon Knight with that really cool moon base. As some people said, contender for figure of the year. But there's the thread again, Punisher Punisher with Punisher War Machine. And he makes sense because he is next to an Iron Man because that is the Mark 47 from Spider-Man Homecoming. And here are the Spider-Men from the Spider-Man No Way Home shelf. And here is Electro. I think he looks exceptional. Great head sculpt. There is Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. There's Tom Holland's Spider-Man. That's the one from Far From Home. Here is the Lizard base, which is very, very nice, as well as Mysterio on the Molten Man base, the homemade suit, the Night Monkey suit. Yes, this one's random. Gambit is there because I really didn't have another spot for him, but there he is. There's Dr. Octopus. There is Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin, as well as the Green Goblin sculpt on the Toys Era body. And until the upgraded goblin comes in, that will have to do. There is the Susu Toys Boss Man, Kingpin 2.0, from his appearance in Hawkeye. I really do like that. And Stan the Man, as well as the D23 Spidey. And I think overall, that's a nice shelf. I think it looks really good, especially with all the other little goodies mixed in. But let's move down here to the Winter Soldier. That is the Stealth Suit 2.0. There is Steve Rogers with the civilian clothes on. There is Maria Hill hidden back there. Underrated figure, doesn't get a lot of love, but I'm going to give her some love right here, right now. There is Falcon from Civil War. There is Black Widow. Great sculpt, bad hair. So if we could ever fix that, that'd be ideal. There's Nick Fury. There is the Winter Soldier. And then here is the Wakanda shelf. There is T'Challa. There's King T'Chaka. There's Shuri, there's Killmonger, there's the Civil War Black Panther suit, as well as the movie suit with the UV lights. Now, here are some wizards from Doctor Strange. We've got Cassilius, we've got Wong, as well as the Ancient One. All of those are third party. The Cassilius, Mads Mikkelsen, is Zensation. Now, here are some less desirable figures. It's the bottom shelf, I know, but Whiplash, Whiplash, Venomized Groot, we've got Heimdall, we've got Ronin. Got Ant-Man and the Wasp, Iron Patriot, Hot Rod. I do actually like Hot Rod, though, because he's got some really sick flame effects. I like that. But the, I guess, 2.0 of the Mark I, not the diecast version. There's that. There is a couple different other diecast pieces. Rescue, Iron Patriot. But... That is those right there. So not the best shelf at the bottom, but let's finish strong here with some of my favorites. Here is the video game Spider-Man line, starting with my favorite that they've done, the Scarlet Spider. One of my least favorites, the Iron Spider. There's the upgraded suit for Miles. The upgraded suit 2.0 is coming soon. That'll be here next week, but there's the Antioch. There's the original Miles. There is the head sculpt from Gwen on Queen of the Dark Spider Body. Did a little custom work there. There is the 2020 Miles Morales, as well as 2099 Spider-Man and the classic suit. So overall, that line is coming together pretty nice. I don't have them all because I don't really need them all. But here is Sylvie. Here is President Loki. Love that head sculpt, as well as TVA Loki. I think is an underrated figure. Here is Captain Carter. There is Red Skull. There is Logan from, I think he's called the Steel Wolf. Yep. Steel Wolf from, I think 11 produces that. Not 100% sure. There's Ghost Rider, Boss Man, Mandarin, tying it all together with Shang-Chi, Win Wu, as well as Win Wu and Suit. So it all makes sense. The thread of destiny has tied all of these together. So I think as well as the 10 rings, putting it all together. So there it is. 
Here is the latest update to the collection. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you sat through it all. It's been quite the undertaking, but it was a labor of love. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, now is the time to do so because there are some big things coming this year that you will not want to miss. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy collecting. And as always, I'll be seeing you in our next video.